Hi guys, Jane here, and today we are going to talk about character outlines. Um, basically, we're going to be going into NaNoWriMo in November, and I'd like everybody to have fleshed out characters before you go because it makes writing so much easier when you know certain things about your characters. Um, these things don't have to be set in stone early on, but it's a good starting point. You can certainly develop a character more as you go, but I do think certain things are pretty vital to know at least about your point of view characters. So um, first of all, you should probably know what point of view is your story going to be told in and who are your point of view characters. If you're not sure about point of view, I did um, a series of videos about that last month, but a real quick rundown. First person point of view is when usually one character is telling the story as their story. It would be, I went to the garden, I saw the cat, I thought and felt this, I wanted to pet the cat, the cat was pretty, no, I wished I had a cat. You know, um, that's a, ve a very, very grade school version, but that's first person. Uh, third person limited would be, he went into the garden and he saw the cat. He went up and pet the cat, it was soft, he loved the feel of its fur, and he remembered having a cat as a child and wished he had another cat. Um, third person omniscient is he went into the garden and petted the cat. The cat thought it was wonderful getting petted, and he wondered about this strange human. He hadn't seen him before. The human had loved that the cat's fur was so, was so soft, and he realized he missed having a cat. His cat, Tabby, had run away as a child and, unbeknownst to him, been hit by a car. But his parents never told him all of that because they wanted to spare his feelings when they found the body. So he was told instead that his kitty ran away. He never learned different and still every day when he was out looking for kitties, he tried to see if his was still around or something. Obviously, again, very grade school basic version of that. But it's a good idea to know especially if you're in first person and third person limited, who your point of view characters are, because they are the ones that you need to really concentrate on having character sketches for, character outlines or sketches, um, and also any main character who is not a point of view character. Um, again, sometimes you have a character who is part of the narrative, but they actually are watching the main character. For instance, um, in The Great Gatsby, Nick is the narrator, but Gatsby is the protagonist of the story. Um, I believe that's the case too with Sherlock Holmes Watson's telling the story, and Sherlock is actually kind of the main character. Okay, so once you figure out who your point of view character is, you know who you need information about. The first thing you need is the basics. What is their name? Their full name. How do you find this? If you can't, haven't come up with anything already, I recommend either grabbing a baby name book or going on Nameberry or just even typing into Google names for boys. And if you want like a time period or a specific name like meaning, you can type that in too. I generally suggest picking a name that is easy to pronounce so that your reader doesn't struggle over it. Um, one thing I hate is trying to read a book where the main character's name just, I can't get it in my head. It's really, really, really hard. You know, I, I don't want everybody to be Jack and Jill and Susan, but, you know, if it's Chrysanthemonium Harmony, I don't, that, that just, that hurts to think it. So make sure your names are easy, make sure they're easy enough, make sure they're pronounceable, and also make sure that your characters have names that sound different and that start with different letters. Uh, it's kind of a little thing, but you don't want to have five characters whose names start with R unless there's a really, really good reason. Because if you have that, it's going to get confusing who's who. Um, the same thing if you have, you know, too many that are kind of close, like Todd and Bob and... Sorry about that, guys. My computer just uh, gave a notice that I was not plugged in and it tried to die. So. Back to what I was saying. You'll want to make sure that the names that you've chosen start with a different letter and that they are not terribly hard to pronounce and that they don't sound terribly similar. This helps the reader differentiate between characters and remember who's who a little bit better. Along with name. 
you also need an approximate age. Oh, and with the name, if you have a nickname, make sure you write that down. Um, I don't like nicknames because I think it can get confusing. So don't add a nickname unless there's a really, really good reason to do it. Because if a character has too many names, it can just get confusing for the reader of who's who. Um, I tried reading Anna Karenina years ago, and I could not keep the characters straight. I just, I was so confused. I felt like I needed a notebook to follow the story, which for me made it a not fun read. Um, I am looking at notes. I have not yet released this, um, but I've written Jane's Guide to Brainstorming and Outlining. I don't know when I'm releasing this. I actually created it as a guide to give to my writers group. It's fairly small, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, but I've given it to my writers group and it has things like how to create a character, uh, a character sketch. So I'm kind of looking down at this to look at the notes that I have on character sketch to make sure I'm giving you all the important information. Once you have a name and nickname, you want an age. It doesn't have to be an exact age, but you should know whether your character is in their 20s or 30s or 50s because it's going to it's going to change how the character acts and interacts with other people. Also, you want a physical description. It doesn't have to be super detailed. It needs the basics. Race, hair color, eye color, you know, if they have an exceptional height, weight, anything that really makes them stand out, scars, whatever. I do recommend having diversity in your book if you can, um, mostly because people want to read about diverse casts and people live in a diverse world. So diversity in, you know, in ethnicity and skin color, but also too diversity in, in hair color and eye color. You don't want every girl to be a blonde or at least every girl who's going to get any attention to be a blonde or a redhead. You know, there's brunettes in this world too. Um, you know, just make sure you've got some variety. Um, certain times the looks may be really important. Like for instance, in Harry Potter, the Weasley's always having red hair. That's a kind of important trait that sets them apart. So you can do something like that. Just make sure if you have a lot of repetition, like everybody's a brunette or everybody's got Scandinavian heritage, why are you doing that? And is it important to the story? Because if it's not, try to mix it up a little bit. The next thing you need is a basic character background. Who is this character? What do you know as the writer happened to them prior to the story? And it doesn't have to be a huge detailed background. Some basics. Are their parents still living? You know, what what kind of job do they have? What kind of education do they have? What kind of interests that are going to be relative to the story do they have? You don't have to know his childhood best friend's name or whether he ever had a cat or a dog or anything like that. But it is important to know stuff that's going to come up in the story. Um, particularly anything that you know biographically is is important to the character story that you're telling. Um, when I wrote my character Cyrus for um, the Alpha's niece, I knew he was a soldier. I knew he left the pack without permission at a young age. I knew he went to be a doctor after he came back and as and he was an amputee. And so, you know, those were things I needed to figure out he where he went to university. Why did he go there? Did he go before or after the war? Why did he leave to become a soldier? You know, did he have romantic engagements beforehand? Did he have romantic engagements afterwards or was he too focused on being a doctor? He was too focused on being a doctor, if you don't mind the spoiler. Um, so <clears throat> those are the kind of things, you know, who were these people before the story started and what's important about their life? And sometimes the answer is just they had a pretty normal life until the story started. Um, I believe like Frodo Baggins from The Lord of the Rings, pretty typical Hobbit existence up until, you know, the ring thing, up until Bilbo's birthday party. Everything's pretty normal. And that's okay if their life is pretty normal, but it's good to know. Um, and that way you can weave that into the story. Another thing that you need to know is what are your character's internal conflicts at the start of a story? So. For instance, in the case of, of Cyrus, in the Alpha's niece, he's an amputee. 
he has personal, or I'm sorry, yeah, he's got personal issues with his body. He has concerns about how he is perceived by others and how people feel about him because of his disability. Um, do the other wolves in his pack feel like he's not as good of a wolf? He also, you know, hasn't really thought about marriage or anything else. You know, he's been focused on his work because he doesn't believe he's worthy of a woman and a family. You know, it's just not in his world because he's an amputee and he got that from being disobedient to his alpha. So what is your character's internal conflicts at the start of the story? And every character should have something, even if it's, you know, they just moved and they don't love their new school or, you know, uh, the very first episode of Dawson's Creek, you've got some puberty stuff going where Joey kind of is like, well, I, I don't want our, our friendship to change, but I'm a woman now and it's kind of weird sleeping in the same bed as my best friend. Um, you know, so kind of a growing up, coming of age, whatever it is, just be aware of it. Do they have any kind of family problems? Is there family conflicts? Is there anything about how they feel about themselves? Do they feel like they're, they're not being truthful about who they are? Are they hiding things? So know the internal conflicts. The next thing you need to know is any external conflicts at the start of the story. And again, these are not things that are going to happen as the story goes. These are things that should have happened before page one. And these are just things to help you really know who your character is and to flesh out a character. Um, a lot of times people talk about characters who feel like they were just introduced into the book as a puppet. And a lot of, and the reason for that is because you don't have the internal and external conflicts. Um, the external conflicts, do they get along with their family? You know, is there some pressure from mom or dad that you know, is causing problems at home? Do they have a girlfriend or an ex-girlfriend who's given them problems or who's dating their best friend? Did they just lose a best friend who they still have to work with or interact with? Um, it could even be things like they're struggling with poverty or they're struggling with illness or anything that is not internal emotional but actual real world, this is difficult. You know, um, do they live in a place that isn't safe? or that is crowded or, you know, live with their aging grandma who doesn't understand them. Just anything that could potentially cause an issue in their world and conflict later in the story that you can use to move the story along, go ahead and add it here. Um, if you've read Harry Potter, in the beginning of the story, Harry Potter's conflicts are basically everything in his life. His family, the family that's raising him, he doesn't get along with Dudley. He's living in a broom or in a cupboard. You know, he's he's not being well treated. He's not getting love and attention from the people who are raising him. You know, his parents died in a car accident, and so he's in this complicated circumstance. Uh, he's the school he's going to is a crap one compared to where they're sending his cousin. All he's getting is hand-me-downs. I mean, these are all very real external conflicts for him that are important as we tell, as the, as J.K. Rowling tells the story, and they're important to us to know about our characters as we tell their story. Um, and the last thing I have <clears throat> listed is it's a good idea to list family and close friends who are going to be important to the story. So if your character has living parents, are they going to be in the story? And if not, why? Um, also, I really, really like, if you have point of view characters, at least one really close friend for that character, because if you have at least one close friend or one person they can bounce ideas off, it really helps with preventing info dumps. If your character can go and, you know, talk about something to this person who maybe doesn't know it already, it's helpful. Um, instead of, you know, she was estranged from her mom and, you know, had a horrible childhood, dad beat her, whatever, you know, talking to her friend and her friend is like, oh, you know, it's, it's Mother's Day. Did you, did you call your mom? You know, I know you thought about it last year, but you didn't. No, I didn't call her again this year. Oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you want to come and spend it with me and my mom? Nah, you know, I mean, just 
I'm obviously, again, I'm just pulling that out of a hat here, but that's the kind of thing where you can get a lot of background story from friends or have them ask about things that they would know. You know, how's your relationship with Donald? Oh, Donald and I broke up. You know, anything like that, that they have somebody to bounce ideas off of. And as you get further in the story, if you have concerns or emotions that you want to bring out, they can talk it through and it doesn't have to be info dumpy. It doesn't have to be big passages of, I was thinking about this. Um, if it's a mystery, kind of a way to relay information or to bring thoughts forth and just to have somebody to move through the story with. So um, a list of at least one close friend and family members who are going to be involved, anybody else in their world, their boss, who anybody who's a main, I don't want to say main, main's not the word, a focal character, like somebody who's going to exist and be important. Um, again, using the Harry Potter, if you have a story like Harry Potter's your main character, but you're going to want to know stuff about you, Hermione and Ron and Dumbledore and, you know, Hagrid. Those are characters who play a big role in the story. You know, I'm using that as an example so that you can kind of see what I mean. But you wouldn't necessarily need to know too much about, say, Percy or, you know, Ron's other brothers who don't really exist. You can kind of add, who don't ex exist much in the story, who aren't there a lot. Like the twins are, but his older brothers, Charlie and Bill. You know, they don't play an intricate role, especially in the first story. So some characters are going to add in later, but have a few that you know exist so that you can use them to move your plot and story forward. So anyway, <clears throat> doing this can help you know your characters better. And as you are creating your story, you'll already have a rich backstory, internal conflicts and external conflicts, so that as you start your story, you can really develop that character and have somebody who is rich and has a lot of personality. Oh, and one other thing I forgot, character flaws. It doesn't have to be right away, but at some point fairly quickly in the story, you need to make sure that your character has some kind of flaw. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be they're evil and they kick cats or anything like that. But characters shouldn't be perfect. Um, back to the Harry Potter. Number one, he speaks parcel tongue. Bad things keep happening around him, and he doesn't have a lot of control of his magic. Once he does get to school, he's not a particularly good student. He's not, you know, Hermione, who... Hermione is, you know, a great student. She's a great wizard, but she doesn't have great social skills. She wants to be a good friend, but she comes off as arrogant and bossy. You know, different characters should have some kind of flaws to them. Um... It's a good idea to know ahead of time what your character's flaws are, but sometimes that can be part of like the internal conflict, like the girl who doesn't feel pretty, but she really is, and she just is battling with low self-esteem. Maybe she's fighting anorexia or bulimia or just has some depression, or maybe, maybe she just doesn't feel pretty because she's got a really gorgeous big sister and she's always comparing herself to her. Whatever it may be, you know, you don't want a character whose life is perfect and they're perfect because they're not interesting. So, um, again, with characters, that's kind of stuff you need to know ahead of time and before you start really plotting out your story and what you're trying to do in the story. If, if you have a character-driven story, it is a very good idea to have your character set up before you plot. I'm making that assumption because most I'm making the assumption that you should start with character because most stories are character driven stories. If you are writing something that is very plot driven or very setting driven, however, you should probably start with those elements in your development um, and then do character a little bit later. But for instance, romances are very character, um, character heavy to a degree, uh, like the cozy mysteries tend to be pretty character heavy as well. Anything where your character is the main focus of the story, I really recommend starting with character because that really changes how you're going to do your plot and in some cases even your setting. All right, guys, um, I look forward to hearing about what you have for NaNoWriMo. Do you have a character set up? Um, are you excited about them? Do you have a background? Have you already sketched out all your characters and are just ready to get to plotting and 
and creating your setting. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, hit like, and if you want more content, hit subscribe. Thanks. Bye.